Sup y'all, my name's Patrick Ryan, otherwise known as Huge Cow Patty or HCP for short. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I like to talk a lot about things that I've got opinions on. I've got lots of opinions, and I just kind of go off the cuff, and so let's give this a try. Today, I want to talk about emulation. I want to talk about piracy, particularly in the video game industry. I want to talk about how I think the video game industry is not combating this properly and how they could better combat this more successfully. A few years ago, Game of Thrones was the most pirated television show in the world. And it was by far the most pirated television show in the world. Now that's not to say that it was the most watched television show in the world. I'm sure at some point that it was that. The show is hugely popular, but it was the most pirated television show in the world. Whereas shows like Breaking Bad, which were hugely popular when they were on the air, and, and actually there's still a very big following around the series. Better Call Saul is doing very well. It wasn't being pirated quite as much as a show like Game of Thrones was. The show like The Walking Dead was not being pirated as much as a show like Game of Thrones. And these were both hugely popular shows, but there's a big difference in the way that each of these shows was delivered. Now, AMC is a cable channel. You have to have cable in order to be able to watch shows on AMC. You can't just pick it up over the air. HBO is a additional subscription service that you have to have in on top of cable and when I say that I mean like at, at a point that's not the case anymore but at some point you had to have a cable subscription which probably cost you 60 or 70 dollars a month plus the 10 to 20 dollars a month that HBO was so if you were like I just want HBO and I don't really care about all this other cable nonsense you were paying eighty dollars just to be able to watch Game of Thrones that's ridiculous. Now, most people who have access to cable, who like watching television, probably just have cable. It's not that big of a deal for them to have cable and to have AMC or some other show that is exclusive to a cable channel that they want to watch. A lot of sports people just have cable. That's actually one thing that has not transitioned over to the internet very well and and to be honest with you I don't understand why I, honestly I think it's got more to do with the NFL kind of controls all that but that's a that's a topic for another day so what I'm trying to get at was Game of Thrones was not a cheap or easy television show to access legally and so a lot of people were just bit torrenting it they were downloading it on Kazar whatever the heck it is that people are doing now with bit torrenting or, or file sharing and so that was a that was a an easy way to get a hold of it a lot of people don't think a whole lot about it and I want to point out right now most people who pirate software who pirate movies and television shows and, and games and stuff like that most of these people aren't bad people a lot of them don't know any better they think oh this thing is just on the internet so it's it, it's free it must be okay I got this from a source that looks legitimate for example um, I know a lot of people who have those little Cody boxes and they're they're stealing movies all the time they don't know it because they bought their little Android powered box and it, it comes with Cody on it. And, you know, they got it from a source that looks legitimate. Sometimes they got these, bought these things from Amazon or, or Best Buy because, you know, you can do legal, legitimate things on them. But a lot of people, you know, they think that and they think, oh, well, you know, just this Harry Potter movie's on here for free. So what do I need Netflix for? And, and so they do that. And, and so they don't know any better. But there are obviously some people out there like, no, I, I know what I'm doing and I just don't care. And, and those people, you know, they're, they're committing a crime, um, whether you like it or not. And honestly, the people who are doing it and they, they don't know any better, they're committing a crime, too, that they are stealing. Um, and, and, but, but I want to communicate here that, you know, they don't, some of them don't know any better. Um, and and I, don't, I don't want anybody here to, to see this and think, like, oh, my gosh, this guy thinks that everybody who's ever watched anything, you know, is, is just a horrible, horrible criminal. It's like, no, this, this is a... This is a uh, it's it's very nuanced. I don't think everything's as, as black and white as that. Eventually, HBO got to where they were like, hey, we our show's being pirated. We're, we're not making the money off of it that we could be making off of it. So let's let's change our business model. Let's make HBO services 
available to anybody that's got an internet connection, similar to how Netflix and Hulu does it, where you just you pay a monthly fee and, and you get all this stuff. And piracy for Game of Thrones dropped significantly because people are not super interested in just stealing everything. People, in general, if they are provided a easy and affordable way to consume your content, will do it. They'll pay the $10 a month or the $20 a month or whatever it is for the service so that they can consume your product legally. That is by far the vast majority of people will do this. And so it's interesting to me that the video game industry has not picked up on this. Now, I think there's some rumblings of, of it's, it's starting to happen. Game Pass on Xbox One, which is, I think it's like $10 a month, and, and you get a whole bunch of games from Microsoft, and there are some third-party games in there. EA has a similar thing with um, EA Access or EA Origin at Premium or whatever it's called on PC, where you just pay a monthly fee, and they give you access to their library of games. And so the, the, even PlayStation Now is sort of like that I don't like their method of having to stream it I, I get where they were coming from they wanted it to be like you're gonna be able to play these PlayStation games without necessarily needing a PlayStation to be able to do it you could do it on a Sony Bravia TV or you could even do it on a, a PlayStation Vita which I've got one of these back here and and, and I, I've heard very mixed things about how that works it's just it seems like it's not there yet that that, that that's a thing that seems to be coming around and I think the gaming industry is getting there and I think even Nintendo who who is going to be kind of the focus of my talk here because they're the reason why this is in the news right now but they're starting to come around their Nintendo online service is, is going to be offering some NES games and I believe that they're going to be adding SNES games and N64 games and stuff like that to the service but th the fact of the matter is when Nintendo goes after Love Roms or Love Retro, I think that was the name of the website, and then Emu Paradise, or Emu Paradise, however you want to pronounce the name, pulls all their ROMs off of their site. Honestly, I think they're making the problem bigger. They're they're shining a light on the fact that, hey, there are ways for you to go out there and, and steal these games. Like, I didn't even know what Love Roms and Love Retro was, and, and I'm no stranger to emulation. I don't do it regularly because I do have a... I do believe that there is an ethical problem with going and, and emulating these games. I don't even like necessarily emulating games that I own, which I do believe ethically is not a problem, even if legally speaking, um, Nintendo and other companies would like it to be a problem. I don't know that it actually is. Depending on who you ask, some people will say, like, oh, well, you can emulate games that you own, and th and they 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 reference the fact that I can pop a CD into my computer and copy that and there's nothing legally wrong with it. Or I can even copy a movie to my computer and there's nothing legally wrong with it. So why in the world would it be wrong for me, legally speaking, to do that to a video game? I, I, I understand that argument. and so. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not 100% certain that if you were to be taken to court over having ROMs of games that you own that you would win that fight. I I would hope that you would, but and I don't think that anyone's going to be taken a court over because that's small potatoes. Nintendo doesn't want to waste money and resources going after one guy that's got his entire Super Nintendo collection on his computer. It's ridiculous. But going after these these big websites, it just shines a light on the fact that this stuff is out there. That Pirate Bay is a thing that you can just go and download this software and be able to play it and be able to emulate it on your computer. And so I think that what needs to happen with the video game industry is they need to get to where they go, you know what, we need to be offering these games to our consumers for a cheap, easy, a a convenient, and, and affordable way to, to be able to do that. And yeah, I think having the entire, the entire Nintendo first party NES catalog available on Switch. The su same with Super Nintendo, same with the GameCube. I mean, and I, and I realize this is not as easy as a film company taking their 75 millimeter uh, film copy of Star Wars or whatever and just digitizing it and then throwing it up on Netflix and, and Hulu and, and wherever else it gets. Like, 
it, it's not as easy to reproduce a video game, a piece of software on hardware that it was not originally intended to run on as it is to just make a movie play on a new uh, digital format or just make a sound file play on a new operating system. This this takes work and it takes energy and man hours and stuff, but I really do think if Nintendo put their entire first party back catalog, let's say from GameCube back on the Switch and said ten dollars a month it's yours just play to your heart's content i think people the switch would switch is already flying off the shelves the switch would just you wouldn't be able to find one anywhere microsoft is very slowly and steadily working on that being the case with the xbox one and i think it's great that even microsoft is is offering like new games on it i if i wanted to i could go spend ten dollars a month on Xbox Game Pass and never spend sixty dollars on another Microsoft game ever again, and I think that that's amazing. And eventually, I hope to be financially in a position where I can go do that because I would love to be able to check out Halo Infinite without having to pay sixty dollars for it and then be disappointed in it like I was Halo Five. Game is such garbage. Um, or be able to play Sea of Thieves or, or something like that. And I, I think Sony would do well to transition to this kind of thing with with PlayStation Now and I think Nintendo should maybe consider getting to where they're offering their new games. Now I understand Nintendo operates a little bit differently like you'll see a Halo game, you know, the month it comes out, it's $60 and then by that Christmas you can get it for 40 bucks because game prices just plummet for some reason over on uh, Microsoft and Sony's platforms and I get Nintendo keeps a game at $60 for far longer so maybe that's just not something's in the cards but but their back catalog I mean like come on what what, what do we got up here now I realize this is a game that wouldn't happen Star Wars uh, Shadows of the Empire because of you know goofy legal reasons and stuff like that but that's the kind of thing that that I want to see I want to see Mario 64 just out there for people to play and I think this is important and this is something that a lot of people who emulate games go on about for you know is that preservation of games is something that has not been high on game developers list there are some games that we're just never gonna see again I mean can you imagine like the Capcom Disney games that came out back on the NES it's amazing that DuckTales and and that that Disney Saturday afternoon collection whatever Saturday morning collection whatever it was called came out on PC it was amazing that that even happened that's a that, that, that's that's an extreme edge case that you know we're not going to see a whole lot of that the the star wars games have changed hands over the years you know you had factor 5 involved with some of them and now ea controls the license are they going to release rogue squadron again i don't know forget goldeneye you had nintendo owned the license rare who is now owned by microsoft developed the game and the license is now currently owned by activision i think they still hold the rights to it that's not going to happen we're not going to get goldeneye again we're not going to get a lot of these these great games that are licensed but there's no reason in the world for these games that are owned by the original rights holders to not just be out there and and put them in a subscription service and yeah put the dumpy ones on there too put you know championship fighting for NES on there put ice climbers for NES on there because that's the kind of game that even though I don't want to go spend five bucks on it I would be like hey guys come come play this game that's really old and really horrible and see what we used to have to deal with this is a big deal to me I really want to see this happen because you know Nintendo's gonna go after these pirates and and I think they have every legal right to and I think that they should protect their intellectual property but for the people who are out there that are like, I am preserving a piece of history that I love, I 100% get where they're coming from. I think that distributing these games, especially to people who don't own them, is morally and ethically wrong. You are stealing. I mean, obviously, you, you, have, um, you have legal problems with that as well. Someone needs to be preserving these games. And I guess if the only people who are going to do it are pirates, then, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, 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 it's hard. As, as someone who, who does believe in protecting your property and being able to make money off of what you own, it, it's, I 
I definitely, it, this is a hard one for me. And so I want to know what you think. What do you think about emulators? What do you think about ROMs? What do you think about people that are, you know, doing this for preservation versus people who are just doing it because they, they don't want to pay for anything? Um, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Uh, check me out on Facebook and Twitter. I'm trying to get more active over there. If you like this, please subscribe. Please share it. Please uh, you know, spread this as something that, that I want to do and get real serious about. So I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, Just kind of talking here and, and having a conversation with my camera. I always think it's weird when YouTubers are like, I'm having a conversation. I mean, yeah, you are, as long as people comment in the comment section but at the time i'm just talking to a computer anyway i'm rambling so i'm gonna stop love you guys i'll see you in the next video